We were just watching a video of Auntie Helen. Remember that you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was asking you about the first time that you met. And I wanted to take a video of you uh, retelling that story of uh, the chance meeting of you happened to be in Manchester at the time when you met. So what were you doing in Manchester that night? We were just visiting from the base, looking for girls, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And where was the base at the time? At Burtonwood was in Warrington. And what year would that have been? 1951. And you remember what time of year it we was? We got married in 53. Yeah, I remember what. What time of year it was when you went to Manchester? No, I don't remember. So you were walking down what street? Oxford Street, which yeah, is the main different. street of Manchester. With your friend? With a friend, yeah. And came upon a couple of girls that were our friends. <laughs> Coming out of a movie theater, you said? Yes, coming out of, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember the movie house. Yeah. But it was the biggest one around on, on that street. And what was your friend's name? My friend was, was from Fort Worth. Mm hmm I knew it a while ago, but now... You sure did, because you just told me the story. <laughs> <clears throat> it was something oh, like Ted... Pappas. He, he was from Fort Worth. His name was Tex Pappas. Tex Pappas from Fort Worth. Yeah. Great name. And so Auntie Helen was with a girlfriend of hers that he knew, you said. Yeah, Helen was with a girlfriend we knew, yeah. That and um, you had never her. met Helen before that night. No, that's my first time to meet her. And then what happened? And we went for a drink and then... I don't know. Well, first you, you said that Ted and the girl took off and left you standing. I don't know how we passed the time. From when we met till she got a bus home, number 65. Yeah. How did you see her again? Did you have her number from yeah. Dad's house or what? Yeah. I think she called me. Uh, she did call me a couple of times on the phone. Oh. The squadron, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. But I don't remember a heck of a lot about it. Right. Because that was um, almost 70 years ago. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the things is the memory is the ailment I've got, which is what? Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's. Yeah. yeah. But you still remember a lot of things like the number of the bus, which is pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. I anyway. Because I made a lot of trips on that bus from downtown to the... Sure. Yeah. Did that bus go all the way from Warrington to Manchester? Or Manchester to her house? No. The bus... We had to get another bus or a train mm -hmm. from Manchester to Warrington. Mm -hmm. And in Warrington, we walked, or I walked, from downtown Warrington to someplace about probably nearly a mile. A oh, mile. Wow. And they had some fresh milk. And the bottles of milk there, and there was a little uh, gate, with the back gate from the from the base, mm -hmm. and we'd buy a quart of that milk and drink it. It was ice cold. Yeah, it was really delicious. I bet. Yeah. And we was in site five and site four, which is the area I think site four was. Site four was the gate where we went in, and it was right, right close to the BX. Yeah. So we used to go there for doing our shopping and the laundry at the base. 
And what was your job when you were in the Air Force? I worked on teletype and crypto equipment. Yeah? Yeah, I went to school, tech school for the equipment I was going to work on. And I made an average of 4.0. And you got a stripe for being the highest in my, my class. Oh, that's wonderful. And then after that, I never saw much of the equipment I was supposed to be working on. <laughs> They always put me in charge of everything. Yeah, great. As I went along. When did you become the higher, a... The higher rank you had, the less you got technical. So what was your question? I was just wondering when you became a master sergeant. When I went to Korea. Oh, yeah. Helen knew, knew it before I did. Oh, yeah? How come? Well... All the paperwork and stuff that supports going to a higher rank. I guess people like me and like my work yeah. in the administrative area. So they promoted me. And the guys I was stationed with before. They all came out to the house, I guess, to see Helen and give congratulations oh, on my promotion, oh. which I still didn't know about. Oh. And they pub then they published the unit and finally got the paperwork for all the promotions that were evolved at that time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Where were we at? Korea. Yeah. I'm, I'm, when did I have 12 months? It was just short of a year, I think. Yeah. But they counted it as 12 months. And Auntie Helen stayed at home. She went to England. And how many kids did you have then when you went to Korea? Three. You already had three. Yeah. I, bet, I bet it was hard to be away from them for that one year. Yeah, it was. For her and you. And the kids. <laughs> she probably had a worse time than I did. Yeah. It wasn't fair, really. Well, when you sign up to be a military wife, you know that there's going to be some times when you have to travel yeah. away. and. Um... Yeah, everybody gets a remote. They call it a remote assignment. Nearly everybody gets a remote assignment sooner or later in their yeah. career. At least it was only one year. Yeah. And then after that, where did you go? Did you stay in England for a while with Auntie Helen? Yeah, we went to a regular tour. We went to Chick Sands again. That was the, it was our second time we went to Chick Sands there. Yeah. I bet Auntie Helen was happy to be at home. And she had already come out to meet me. And I was at the NCO club waiting to get a ride somewhere back to War into Warrington. And she was out there looking for me. We finally met up. Yeah. And then we went to uh, to Bedford and got a hotel room. Yeah. Stayed the night there. And the next morning we got a train to Manchester. Yeah. Because I had leave time coming. So That was it. Yeah. And whereabouts in Manchester was Auntie Helen from? Birmingham. She was born in Birmingham. Erdington, <coughs> Birmingham. Yeah. England. But then she was raised in um, Trafford Park. Trafford Park, yeah. Where her mum and dad lived. Yeah, he worked uh, making train wheels or something. Who did? She did? Harry. Her Harry, her, 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 yeah. her dad, yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I think he could, have <clears throat> he could have done a lot better than that if he wanted to. Yeah. He's a smart man. Yeah. Now, when Auntie Helen came to America, um, after you were already married, 
she got to the train station and you were not there. Yeah, no, Why um, did you do that to her, Uncle Blanton? Because she s sent me a telegram saying when she was going to be in Waco. And mm. she didn't, I wasn't there. I know. Why? Because I was, I, if, I, if the telegram had been right, I would have been there. Mm. The telegram gave me the wrong, the wrong information. Day. Yeah. So she was waiting, um, and you never showed up? She was sitting on the, her suitcase in the train station. Oh. The guy came out and asked her, could he help her? And she told him my dad's name, and that he was working. So mm -hmm. luckily, Keith, Keith was, Dale, Dale was in Korea. Yeah. And had come home. Yeah. And uh, he went to go fetch her, or did this nice man take her back to the... Yeah, she had the phone number. She dancing. called uh, the, the guy that was going to help her got her name and everything. And my sisters called home because mm -hmm. they had the phone number. So they took Helen to, uh, to, have, to the house. And you weren't even there? No, I wasn't there. Till the next morning. So next when you morning. showed up, there was your wife in your mom and dad's house? Yeah. Had she even met them before then? Next day, no. How awkward and strange. Yeah. New wife. New wife, instant yeah. wife, instant English wife in your house. And what year was that, 53, you say? Yeah, because we was married already. And how old were you when you got married and how old was Auntie Helen? <clears throat> Wasn't it 19 and 17 or something like that? What's the question? Uh, how old were you when you got married to Auntie Helen and how old was she? I was 22. I had just turned 22 in December. Mm -hmm. And she was like 17 or 18. I think. No. She must have been 18, I think. So you were four years older? She was two years, eight months older than, younger than me. Yeah. We'll have to revisit the math. And how long were you married to Auntie Helen? Uh, 63 years. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's a beautiful love story. <laughs> Yeah, but after 63 years, it's going to end somehow, you know? Yeah. And uh, she had a very, very it happy was a good life with 63 you. 63 years, though. Of course it was. Between us. It was a wonderful 63 years. And four beautiful kids. And she just had a birthday. Before she passed. Before she passed. Yeah. Right after her birthday, August the 24th. And she died September the 12th. She died right yeah. there, in that chair right there. And you were in the kitchen when she yeah. passed, and then you came to see her. Were you making something to eat when she passed, do you remember? Were you having a drink, maybe? I was of tea. making a milkshake. Oh, you are making a drink for her, yeah. yeah. And Jay had just brought her in from the bedroom to yeah. her living room and put her on the couch yeah and she was already fully dressed and just faded away very peaceful death though wasn't it it was yeah. she wasn't no. struggling for air or no. flailing or no, in pain no, she just no, slipped no, away no. yeah we all like to well, die that way that, yeah that was painful yeah i know you miss her very much she misses you too yeah and you said that when you die, you've got something to look forward to. Yeah, I hope she's there waiting for me. Here's the lady we're talking about in the video. She's got a light shining on her, so that's why it's a bit shiny. That's a nice glamour shot of Auntie Helen. Mm -hmm. You married a babe, didn't you, Uncle B? Yeah, sure did. <laughs> what do you miss most about having Auntie Helen here at the house? 
onwards. Right? What do you miss the most about her not being here? Oh, well, after three years the way I it's hard to to realize that she's gone. Right. I still look over on the bed to see if she's awake yet. Yeah. And she doesn't answer. Right. We were just watching some videos of her and you would always chase her around with a video camera. Even though it was a kid's birthday, you'd be videotaping <laughs> Auntie Helen. <laughs> well, she thought I was uh, <laughs> taking too many pictures, probably. <laughs> of her? Probably. There's no such thing as too many pictures of your wife, right? No. Not when it's a, a wife like that, right? That's right. Yeah, I know that. Beautiful lady. I'm glad you took those videos, Uncle Blandon. Yeah. They're priceless. How many yeah, different? It's a shame. I wish I could, would have taken more. Well, you took quite a few. You took a lot of them. Um... Although, what do you mean I'll get to have any more pictures than we already got? Right, because you've still got a lot that weren't even on that video. And you yeah. said you just found the camera that you took all those pictures with? Yeah. In a shoebox? And it, uh, it probably doesn't work right, because when we come through customs, we're coming from. England or Germany, one of them. Yeah. And Craig dropped the camera oh, on yeah. the floor and it flew open. And those people in customs, they were uh, they were going to charge me some kind of customs fee. And I said, well, I've already been in and out of this country about three times. Yeah. So they let me go. Give customs me fee for a camera? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It this was going into England? Coming out oh, coming of, back here. Coming out of either oh. England or Germany, why? That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, it's a Super 8 camera that you still have. It might not work. Yeah. But it captured um, a lifetime of memories, didn't it, that camera? It captured a lot. Yeah. Sure. Living in Germany. Living in Japan. Yeah. Living in England. Yeah. Not too many pictures from Korea, but then it was just you, so it wasn't as exciting. <laughs> was when you had the family. Yeah, Helma wrote nearly every day. Oh. A letter. And you still have all those letters. Which I have, and I've read a few of them. Yeah. But it's it's, it's kind of heartbreaking. I'm sure. At least you have them. I don't know whether to to cut them up into pieces <laughs> or not. Shred them. Well, shred them, yeah. Maybe one day. Maybe we'll shred them and then we'll put them in your coffin. You can put them back together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though you'll be busy with Auntie Helen. Do you remember how you proposed to her? It was at Bellevue, I think. Yeah. I remember we were supposed to meet. And we did meet. And I had the ring. Yeah. But I don't think I got on my knees. No? Was she surprised? If I did, I don't remember. Or did she see it coming? I think she knew it was coming, yeah. Did you ask her dad? I got a letter. From, yeah, I, I'd already talked to him and I got a, I had to have a letter from Harry. saying what he thought of, to my commander. Mm -hmm. Basically saying how he felt about my daughter getting married at the age of, what, 17? Yeah. Or 18, yeah. whatever it was. So it must have been a good letter. But just one little page. It sealed the deal. Yeah. My goodness. It was good, yeah. And I finally got the base commander's approval. I had to get the base commander's approval and my commander's approval. And had to, and actually, I was supposed to get married in December. Yeah. And her investigation at OSI had, was dragging her feet. Didn't get it done in time, so I had to, we made it in January. That's crazy. So 
If we'd have got in December, I'd have got more money back on taxes. Oh, <laughs> bummer. Yeah. Oh, bummer. So January the 10th it was. Yeah. 1953. I already had the uh, invitations for the reception. Oh, for the December one. For the reception, yeah. They just scratched it out. Oh, my and goodness. Put the new date in there. That's crazy. I got a copy of it somewhere. That was 1953 then? Yeah. And what church was that where you got married? St. Cuthbert's Church. In? Which is in New England. I don't, uh, in you... Stratford or Ermston or? Huh? Was it Stratford or Ermston? No, but they're in that book, Stratford. Is it, is it in uh, Old Trafford? Yeah, it's in Cuthbert. Old Trafford. It's in Old Trafford in Manchester, yeah. Yeah. And is that church still around? As far as you know? The last time we were in England, we went there and, and it, it was still there. But all the trees and stuff that were, were there when we got married had already been cut down. Oh, yeah. And a big monument is still there huh. of the church. And the Church of England had that church, St. Cuthbert's. It was there for, there was two or three churches in there that are undermined in that book. Yeah, I remember seeing them. And then where did you go on your honeymoon? To, where is it? Everybody goes. Blackpool. Blackpool, yeah. That's Beautiful Blackpool, was. yeah. We got into a hotel that night after the train ride. And it was cold. I bet you didn't give a dot. I didn't pay too much attention. You had your beautiful English bride. It's yeah. good if it's cold because you'll snuggle more. <laughs> right? You'll snuggle more if it's cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was even a heater in the room we were in. Oh, my goodness. We just stayed under the covers. I bet you did. I bet you wanted to stay there for a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for marrying my Auntie Helen. You're welcome. Yeah, you made I'd a. Do it again. I know you would. You made a beautiful life for her, yeah. and she loved you so much, Uncle B. Pretty good. Pretty good, I'll say. Yeah. All right, we're signing off now. Yeah. At the end of this interview, it's the twenty eighth of October, two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. All right. You passed the test. Thank you. You passed <laughs> the test too, Uncle Blondin. Love you. <laughs> I love you too, Kat. <laughs>